Hi, I'm Sandy Peterson, and we're going to talk about Sleeper. In a little while, you're going to see my son Lincoln, and he's also going to talk about Sleeper. I'm going to talk about the spell books and, uh, and, and creatures that Sleeper has available. And he's going to talk about the strategies that you can use with them. So, Sleeper. Like every other unit, uh, faction in the game, he starts with six cultists in an area. His starting area is in North America. Yay! Specifically in Nakai, which is, according to Lovecraft, in Oklahoma, but we won't go into details there. Now, his units include two wizards, which have a combat of zero and uh, cost one to summon. Three serpent men, which have a combat of one and cost two to summon and four formless spawns, his signature monster. These cost three to summon, but their combat varies. If you have one formless spawn on the map, the combat's one. If there's two formless spawns on the map, even if they're not in the same area, it's two each, and so forth, up until when there are all four formless spawns on the map, they're each worth four. So the more of them you get, they kind of work together and, uh, and multiply. Uh, your signature ability, or your unique ability, is Death From Below. What this does is, during the Doom Phase, you get to place a monster on the map that costs equal to or less than anything you've previously purchased. So, for example, if in the first time, in the first turn, you bought a Serpent Man, which costs two, then during the first Doom Phase, you could place any monster on the map that cost one or two, in other words, a lizard a wizard or a serpent man. If you summon a formless spawn, you could place any unit on the map in any area you have a unit that costs three or less, so another formless spawn or whatever. And of course, once you get South Agro out who costs eight, you can place any of your units uh, on the map. That's once per turn during the loop phase. South Agua, uh, to play to play him, you must have a formless spawn somewhere on the map you pay eight power and put him in the same area as the formless spawn. You don't need a gate for this. Um, Sethagawa's combat ability is equal to the power of the person you're fighting or two, whichever is more. So for example, if you fight an enemy early in the turn where they have 10 or 12 points of power, he'll roll 10 or 12 dice. If you fight him late in the turn when he's out of power, you roll two dice because you have a minimum of two. He comes with the special ability that you can, special action you can only use if he's in play, of Lethargy. This costs zero. If Sathago is in play, do nothing. Counts as an action. You can use it to just sit around and, uh, and, and pass while other players keep spending their power. Then later in the turn when you have a bunch of powers left because you've been Lethargy all the time, you can go get them. Okay, his spell books. <clears throat> One of, two of them are based on spending power of your own. For one of them, you spend three power, and each other player gains one power. Of course, they always love it when you do that, but, you know, it gives you a spell book, so I guess it's worth it. The other one, another one like that, is you spend three power, and one other player that you choose gets the three power. This is a good one to use to try to, like, well, not blackmail exactly, but try to reward other players. For example, you might say, if you're nice to me or don't do this terrible thing, I'll give you this three power um, when I get that spell book. Uh, or you could see a player who's about to be hurt bad, not that you care that he's hurt, but maybe the person who's hurting him is going to benefit too greatly for it. So you give the three power to the weak player so he can better defend himself against your mutual enemy. Other spell books. Initiate a battle. You don't even have to roll combat dice. If you have a cultist in an area with a monster, or, or our enemy cultists, you spend, you spend one to do a battle. You don't roll any dice, but you initiated a battle. Then there is roll six or more combat dice in a single battle. Uh, usually you can do this with Seth Agawa on the map, or if you have at least three formless spawn, then each formless spawn has a combat of three, so two of them together would roll the six dice you need to get that spellbook. Fifth spellbook is perform a ritual of annihilation. You're, you're certainly going to do this at some point during the game, it's an, it encourages you to do it earlier rather than later. Whenever you do it, you get that spellbook. And the last one is, like everyone else, you get a spellbook when you summon, when you awaken South Agua. Now, what are these spellbooks you're accumulating? Well, let's talk about them. We have Cursed Slumber. Cursed Slumber, for one power, lets you take one of your gates off of the map with its cultist and put it on your faction card where he stays. 
when he's here, he's immune to damage. He still count, he still gives you power during the gather power phase. He still counts as points during the doom phase. He's just immune to harm. As an action for one power any time, you can return him to the map to anywhere that doesn't have a gate. You only have one gate in Cursed Slumber at any one time. Next action, a real power saver for you. Burrow. Burrow enables you, after you, if you move two or more monsters in a round, then you get one power back after you move them. For example, if I moved two monsters, that would cost me two power, and then I'd get one power back. So it effectively cost me one power to move two monsters. If I moved three monsters, that would cost me three power. I still only get one power back, so it costs two. So Sleeper tends to move units in groups of two because they get the maximum benefit from Burrow that way. Energy Nexus is the special spellbook for wizards. It enables you to take a wizard, pay one power, take a wizard, and put it on another faction's sheet. And what happens is then you get to mimic that faction's unique ability. For example, if you place it on Crawling Chaos's faction sheet, you could then fly, because that's his faction ability of flight. If you place it on Yellow Sign's uh, faction sheet, you could then gain power during the Gather Power Phase from Desecration Markers, if you had a unit there, just like he does. You still can't Desecrate, because that's not his unique ability, that's his, the King and Yellow's ability, but you can get power off his sights. Okay, and so forth. Every faction has something that you can steal with the wizard. Uh, at, during the next turn's Doom phase, you take the wizard and return him anywhere on the map. So you can also use it to, to teleport a wizard to anywhere on the map for just one power. Ancient Sorcery, another very flexible ability. This is based on the Serpent Man, and what happens is, before a battle starts, before even the pre-battle happens, if you have a Serpent Man in the area, use Ancient Sorcery to immediately take one action that has to start in the area. So, for example, you could take the action of, well, if you got a gate, you could immediately summon a monster. If you, uh, uh, if, if you had Xethago there, he could immediately capture it. Well, we'll get to that. Sorry. If you, you could use your power to move out of the area to escape the fight. You can't use it to move units into the area because the action has to originate in the area. But you could recruit a cultist, you could curse slumber your gate away so it'll be safe. There's a lot of actions you can use with, with ancient sorcery. It's very, very flexible. Okay. Then we have demand sacrifice. This, you have to have Sethago in play. If he's in play, then anytime someone's about to attack you or you're about to attack him before battle, you can demand sacrifice from the enemy. The enemy then has a choice. He can either lose one doom point, or he can say that Sethagoa gains an Elder Sign. His choice. If he doesn't want to do either one of those, he doesn't have to, but then, in the combat, any kills he rolls are automatically converted to pains. He can't kill your guys. Now, this doesn't work on deaths that are caused by non-dice rolls. For example, Cthulhu can still devour one of your units. A Nightcock can still abduct you. But you're safe from rolled combat kills, unless he pays you, a, unless he loses a dew point or you get an Elder Sign. His final ability is also based on Sethagoa. It's called Capture Monster. <clears throat> it lets Sethagoa capture monsters the same way that other Great Old Ones and monsters can capture cultists. Just like with Capture Cultists, if the enemy Great Old One is in the area, you can't capture a monster. You don't get to pick which monster is captured. The defender does, but the monster that's captured goes under your sheet like this. During next turn's gather power, you return them to the player's pool and get a power. Even a monster that costs more than one power still only gives you one power, though. These are Sethagawa's abilities. I hope you liked hearing about them. He's proven a very fun faction to play, and uh, Lincoln's going to talk about some of the strategies he likes to use when he's playing Sethagawa. Thank you. Hi, I'm Lincoln Peters, and I'm going to talk about the strategies of Sleeper. There are two opening gambits that you can start with. Make two gates, which is bad if Kron Chaos is in the game, as he can make a Night Gaunt come and abduct your cultists and capture, uh, I mean, capture your cultists and take your gate away. And also, you won't be able to get Sothaga the next turn. Or two, make one gate in, make one gate, and then summon a formless spawn. And then you'll have one power left over to either summon a wizard to protect your other gate, or move a cultist. We're going to say I summoned a wizard.
All right, for your second turn, you have two more options. Well, during the doom second turn doom phase, you spawn another formless spawn because you have one already out on the map. So now you have two options. You can either summon Sothagwa and get him out early, or you can summon another formless spawn and then take these two and go and initiate a battle. Now this will get you two spell books, one for initiating a battle, and then another one because you rolled six or more com dice in combat. Now if you summon Sothagua and you don't summon the other formless spawn, you can still get two spell books, it'll just be two different ones. Because you'll get the one for awakening Sothagua, and then with your two power left over, you can move a formless spawn into an adjacent area and initiate a battle. Alright. And on your third turn, what you usually want to do with Sleeper Faction is Lethargy as much as possible. If you didn't get Sothagua this turn, also you'll have another phone spawn out. If you didn't get Sothagua the, the second turn, you want to get him the third turn, because he is uh, super good and essential for the Sleeper Faction, as all the Faction Great Old Ones are. And you'll want to get Sothagua out, and you want to Lethargy as much as possible. Um... Because when you Lethargy, everyone else runs out of power pretty quick, and you're left with over with five or four or five power that you can go capture cultists, take away gates, or make your own gates. Someone just you're allowed to do whatever you want without having to be messed with. All right, now let's talk about the sleepers' spell books and how to abuse them. So, first, let's go with Energy Nexus. So Energy Nexus lets you take a wizard and put it on another faction's unique ability. So to start, uh, Crawling Chaos is an obvious choice because you can fly two spaces and you can fly burrow places. Um, Cthulhu, if, uh, if Sothagwa dies somehow, you can Energy Nexus onto Cthulhu's faction sheet and then you can resummon Sothago for just four power and you get an Eldritch Sign. So that's really good compared to having to summon him back for eight power and such. Um, Black Goat really isn't that useful for Sleeper as you get to death from below every turn anyways, but it has its uses sometimes. Yellow Sign, uh, since Yellow Sign is going around desecrating places anyways, and they're probably in your areas, you might as well get power for it. And also, if you've been lethargying and everyone's out of power, you can just quickly slide your units into adjacent desecrated areas and get lots of power for it. And when your wizard comes back from Energy Nexus, he can go on to a desecrated marker. Um, opener. So, opener, you can beyond one gates with your Forma Spawns and with Sothagua. Now you can do this and beyond one next to a tasty monster that you can then go and capture. Um, and finally, Windwalker. Windwalker's unique ability is Hibernate. And so you've been uh, lethargying all, all turn and you have four, four or five power left, maybe just two or three and you don't know really what to do with it. You, you can just Hibernate and then have all that power for next turn. Alright. Demand Sacrifice. Demand. Do not Forget to demand sacrifice when Sothagwa is in play and people start to fight you. Um, Curse Slumber. So, Curse Slumber, what I usually like to do with it is, or you can do anything with it really, but what I usually do is take away the gate in your starting area and put it on your faction sheet and then rebuild a gate there. And then you can put this one down somewhere that, like if you have Energy Nexus Yellow Signs onto a Desecrated Marker, and then you can Curse Slumber this one up, and then you basically have your gate-making factory in your hometown. Alright, um... Alright, now we're going to go into the deadly combo, which is Burrow, Ancient Sorcery, and Capture Monster. So, Let's say you have a Serpent Man and Sothagwa, and you have these three spell books. You can go around capturing people's monsters, and if they try to fight you, then what happens is, first, Ancient Sorcery happens. And they try to fight you, 
And you can just move out of the area, burrow out of the area into an adjacent area. And you can basically keep doing this and no one can kill you because you can just move away when they try to fight you. But you want to make sure that when you do eventually run out of power, you're somewhere that is protected and not out in the open where you can get picked off by a neural tip. And those are the strategies for Sleeper.